those of you that think that gospel music has gone too far. You think we've gotten too radical with our message. Well, I got news for you. You ain't heard nothing yet. And if you don't know, now you know. Go with go right. Better put them hands together and act like you know up in here. Chief Pete. Really, I've been going through so many tests, really got me down. Put your hands together.
Our guest speaker will be Chris Chapel, also known as my dad. Some of you may know him from substituting your teacher, but if not, here's some information on him. Currently, he is the pastor of Crossroads Church and was missionary of Southeast Asia. Today, he will be talking about a form of prayer and will try to finish on time. All right, good morning, Calvary Academy. Thank you, sixth grade, for uh, allowing me to be able to speak today. It's an honor to be able to share at your chapel today. Let's give it up for the sixth grade again. They did fantastic. As that fine young man said, my name is uh, Mr. Chapel, and uh, yep, that's right. I named myself after Friday Morning Chapel. No, that was the name my parents gave me, of course, Mr. Chapel. And I know I have a funny accent this morning. Some I've been accused of being a cowboy by fifth grade, right? I had some accuse me of being Australian in English, but uh, I really grew up uh, in the South. So this, I hope maybe it's a Southern accent. I'm not sure what it is, but I have been all over the world, as Zach says. And I've uh, seen many accents and picked up some accents. So this is what you get, Mr. Chapel. Uh, but nonetheless, I am so happy to be here today. I love Calvary Academy. This is one of my favorite schools in all of the world. I have had so much fun. Yep. The teachers, the students, uh, the, the parents, the facilities. You guys have a great, great school. And it is so great uh, to be here today to, uh, to speak to you. And I I am going to talk about today. I think it's something that when they asked me to share at chapel, I just knew this is what the Lord wanted to say to you today. And I'm so excited to share this message with you because I believe this is going to be a very, very powerful, powerful thing that I want to give you this morning. And no, it's not in here. I know everybody's looking at this present. Everybody excited about Christmas? Yeah, yeah I'm excited too, right? I'm excited also. Uh, but I want to give you something that's not necessarily in this. It's something that's even better. And it's a, it's a prayer. It's a prayer that God has taught me. And it's a prayer that is so, so powerful. It will really change things to make things better in your life and other people's lives. And I believe it's a prayer. It's a simple prayer. It's an easy prayer to pray. Everybody in this room can pray this prayer this morning. I I promise you, I don't care if you're if, if, if you're a fifth grade um, or you're a kindergarten, if you're a teacher, if you're a parent or, or a grandma, Isaac out there. I know grandma like uh, Isaac is always talking about grandmas in sixth grade, but even a grandma, Isaac can pray this prayer. Right. I promise you, this is an easy, easy prayer that everybody can pray. And when you pray it, when you pray it, there will be so much power when you pray. it. Who likes power? I like power, right? Power is great. I'm going to ask if they can put the slide for the scripture up on the screen here. We're going to be, everybody say 1314. 13. Remember that number. What number? 1314 is a powerful number because that's the prayer we're talking about this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. Can we all stand? I like to stand when we read God's word because it's not my word, right? It's his word. So I like to stand and honor what God has to say. I'm going to read this scripture to you. You can whisper it to you, uh, whisper it as well. But this is what it reads. It says, the grace, everybody say grace. Grace. Of the Lord Jesus Christ. Of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the love of God. And the fellowship. Of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Now, let me pray for you real fast. Go ahead, close your eyes and bow your heads. Gracious Father, thank you for the word that you have given us today. I pray your word will change the way I think. It will change what I want. And it will change what I do. So I will be more like you. And all God's people say, 
Amen. You may be seated this morning. You may be seated. So in this scripture, in this verse, look, it has three names. It has Jesus Christ, right? The Lord Jesus Christ. It has God, which we know as God the Father, and it has the Holy Spirit. Who knows what that is called? It's called the what? Everybody say it together. The Trinity, right? Have you heard that word, the Trinity, before? It's not necessarily in the Bible, but it is in the Bible. It's right here. It's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Say that with me. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? So I call this prayer, I call it the Trinity prayer. I call it the Trinity prayer because, you know, I believe that God exists, right, in three persons, namely the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I believe, though, that these three are one, right? He is, the, that these three are one God. They're one God. They are uh, uh, the same in substance, but they are equal in power and glory. That's called a that's called a, a catechism, right? We believe that God exists in three persons, namely the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But these three are one. They are the same in substance, but they are equal in power and glory. And I know that may be a little deep for some of you, but that's who God is. That's the God we pray to, the God we sing these songs to, the God we read about, right? He is a Trinity God. But I'm not going to talk a lot about the Trinity today. I'm going to talk about this prayer because this prayer is powerful. So what do we need to know about this prayer? I'm going to tell you the first thing you need to know about this prayer is that we can pray the grace of Jesus Christ for everyone we know. We can pray the grace of Jesus Christ for everyone we know. What is the grace? Now, I know at Thanksgiving we talked, we probably said the grace, didn't we? Right? The prayer before you ate all of that food. But grace is even bigger than that prayer. Grace is even, grace, let me tell you what grace is. Grace is the free gift of God. God wants to give us a gift, right? A big, awesome gift. The best gift you will ever receive in your life. There is a verse in Romans and it says the wages of sin is death but the free gift, everybody say free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Now why is this so important? Why do we need to know this? Because there are people in your life that have never received God's free gift of salvation and the forgiveness of their sins. Did you know that? There are people that are not saved in your life. They may be family members. They may be classmates. They may be friends of yours, but they have never some have never received God's free gift of forgiveness and salvation. And God is asking you to pray for them. Pray that they will receive God's gift of grace, God's gift of salvation. And that's important because if they were to die today, that means they won't go to heaven and spend eternity or forever in heaven. And so we have got to pray for them. We've got to pray for them. Now, this means that they're also under now, they're under the control of sin, right? Sin is that force that causes us to do things that hurt ourselves, hurt other people, and also, also offend God, push God away. And it's, it's, it, is, it is hurting them, right? And they need to be set free from that curse of sin. And God is asking, will you pray for those people in your life that they will receive God's free gift of salvation? Now listen, I brought this gift here today. And here, uh, here you, you see this uh, the sign on the front. It says, to who? Some, some can read it. It says, to you, right? This is, imagine God, right, has got got a gift for you. Got a gift. He has a gift for everyone. Every single person in the world. It's a free gift. It's got your name. It says to you, your name. Put your name there. And it's from who? Jesus, right? The cross. I've got the cross. 
The, have you ever though at Christmas maybe there was a gift for you it was under the tree and maybe it was there for a long time but you never saw it until Christmas Day because it was so deep behind the tree and you never saw it right you never knew there was a gift for you underneath the tree and that's the way salvation is for so many they don't think God would ever give them a gift they don't know that there's actually a gift for them given to them by God and so so they need your prayers to pray that they will see God's gift for them. Right? It's wrapped up in a nice wrap. Uh, it's, it's pretty much pretty nice. And it's got a nice bow on it, right? If only, if only they would open this gift. Because everybody has a gift, but not everybody will open and receive God's free gift of salvation. But we want those that we love, that we care about, we want them to see this gift. And we also want them to open this gift so they can receive what is inside this gift. And that is is the forgiveness of their sins. Salvation. The gift of, of life forever with God. The gift of heaven. That's what's inside of this gift. It's salvation. Right? And so do you think you can pray for people in your life to receive God's gift of grace? But that's not the only part of this gift. The part of this prayer. This prayer also says what? It says, and pray for the love of God. The love of God. Listen, God loves you more than anyone. Do you know that, right? You have to know this. It's so important that you know that God loves you more than anyone, more than mom and dad, more than your best friend, right? He even more than the one who may think you're cute. <laughs> Listen, God loves you more than anyone. Nobody loves you more than God. There's many verses in the Bible. For God so loved the world, right? He gave his son, right? And to die for our sins, to give us eternal life, right? One verse says that God is love. There's one verse. One verse says that God has loved us with a great love. God loves you with a great love. But here's the thing. Some people don't know that. There are people in your life. There are people, there are family members, there are friends, there are classmates. They don't know that God loves them. They don't believe that God could ever love them. Let me tell you something that I learned a long time ago that it helps me out so much. Here's a statement. It says, hurting people, hurting, hurting people, not just on the outside, but on the inside, hurting people hurt people. Now, what does that mean? It means those who are, who someone has hurt them, people, someone who has hurt them, they respond by hurting other people, right? They do things that hurt people because someone hurt them. They say things that hurt people because someone has hurt them or inside they are hurting. Do you understand that? So there are people, there may be even classmates. Now, I think this is a great school, and I have heard you guys say some nice things to each other. But sometimes I've overheard some people, sometimes someone will say something that I think is careless, that I think is hurtful. And when that happens to you, when someone does that to you, that is a cue. That is when that is when you immediately you say that person must be hurting. Someone must have hurt them. And that's when you can pray this prayer. You can pray, God, will you show them your love? It's a powerful prayer. It's such a powerful prayer. Because when someone receives the love of God, when they finally receive God's love, their life will change greatly, quickly, radically. Their life will be very different. Hey, I used to do things that hurt people. Believe it or not, I used to say things. I used to do things that hurt other people. And that was my life before I was a believer. But 
Mr. Chapel, he finally one day received the love of God and everything in my life changed. I stopped saying hurtful things. I stopped doing things to hurt other people because somebody prayed for me that I would receive the love of God and I did. That's how powerful this prayer is. Do you know someone who you can pray for today that really needs the love of God? Someone who is doing things that you know is hurting themselves or hurting other people. They're saying things that are hurting other people. That is God saying, will you pray for them? Don't fight back. Don't attack them back. Pray for God's love to, to fill their hearts so that their life will be changed forever. Here, again, we have this gift. Uh-oh, I've got to fix my illustration here. We have this gift, and there are people that they just don't think God would ever love them. If they only knew that God has the gift of love for them. Right underneath this tree this Christmas, think about it. Pray that someone, pray that someone this Christmas in your life would receive the love of God in their hearts. And it will change everything. It's better than any other gift they could receive except for the gift of salvation. But lastly, that's not all. There's another prayer in this scripture, in this verse that we read. It says, and the fellowship or power, say power. And the fellowship or power of the Holy Spirit. Not only can we pray for others to be saved and receive God's gift of salvation, not only can we pray that God will give somebody love, right, and change their life, but we can also pray that those in our life can receive the ministry or the fellowship or the power of the Holy Spirit. Because there are people in our life who are weak, right? They're weak. What does it mean? What do I mean when I say they are weak? They could be weak in their bodies, right? Their bodies are weak because maybe they're sick, right? Maybe there's something wrong with their body and they need us to pray for them. They need us to pray that the Holy Spirit will make them strong. And you can pray that everybody in this room, if you know someone who is weak in their body, you can pray that God would give them strength and God will answer your prayer. Also, people who are weak on the inside, what do I mean by that? People who are weak on the inside. People who are sad. People who are, are maybe feel depressed inside. Maybe there is fear that is, uh, is bothering them a lot. Maybe they feel hurt because some, someone did something to them. Right. But inside they feel weak. They don't they don't feel very strong. And you may have felt like that before. And you may have a friend that is like that. You may have a parent. You may have someone that, you know, that is that way. And the Bible says you can pray that they that power or the ministry of the Holy Spirit for their life. And then you've got folks that are having a, a hard time really just obeying God and doing what God wants them to do, right? They know that God has a good plan, right? This book inside has every good plan for your life. And in here, everything God wrote for you is so that you will have a good life. But sometimes it's hard to obey this book, isn't it? Even for me, it's hard to obey this book. And I need to pray that God will give me power. And I need you to pray for me and you to pray for others that God will give them power to do what God wants them to do. Now, here's a verse. Here's a verse. Jesus, when talking about the, the, the Holy Spirit, this is what he said in John chapter 16, verse 33. He says, in this world, you know this verse probably, in this world you will have trouble. That's what he said. In this life, right? Has anybody ever had trouble? I've had trouble, right? You've had some trouble. You've had some problems, right? There are things that have happened to you that were not good. But guess what Jesus says? I have overcome the world. 
Mm. Right? Jesus says, I am giving you my spirit because you will have the power that you need to overcome all of those troubles that make you weak. That's not my words. That's Jesus talking. But he's saying, when you pray and you ask for God to give you power, God will give you power. When you are weak and you need God's help, you ask for God's help and God will always give you help because God loves you, right? God wants you to have the power that you need to, to be able to continue to live for him and do what he wants you to do. Now here again, I've got this gift. I've got this, 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 this box here this morning. And um, my illustration didn't work out as, as cool as I wanted it to here. But it's the same concept here, right? There is a gift underneath the tree. And it's underneath your tree too. It's got your name on it. It's got other people's names on it. It's a gift that God wants to give everybody in your life. But you know who they are. You know the people in your life, especially this Christmas, who need to receive God's gift of, of salvation, right? Can you pray for them this Christmas? Can you pray that over the next few weeks that God will save those that you know need His forgiveness? And then can you pray for those that you know are hurting themselves or hurting other people? Can you pray that God would show them love? Can you pray that prayer for them this Christmas that they will receive the gift of God's love, right? And it will change their life forever. They'll stop doing those things that hurt you or hurt other people. Or will you also pray for those that you know are weak? Maybe they're weak in their body, they're weak inside, or maybe they're having a hard time doing what God wants them to do. Can you pray that God will give them power and God will answer your prayer? Listen, we can pray all kinds of prayers. We can. And God wants us to pray. He wants us to pray. That's the way we talk to God and God talks back to us. But there are some prayers that God has given us in, his, in this book. And those prayers, we know every time we pray those prayers, God God will answer those prayers 100% of the time. Isn't that cool? That you know you can ask God for something and know that 100% of the time, every time, God will answer those prayers. This is that prayer. This is that prayer. God can use you to pray these prayers for your friends, for your family. But this is something I need you to do too. Because I love this school. I love this school. I pray for this school every single day. I pray for the students. I pray. I'm not trying to boast in myself here, but I pray for you. I pray for the teachers. I pray for the parents. I pray for God to protect this school because I love this school so, so much. But I would love for you to also think for the rest of the school year, sixth grade, this is, this is your chapel. You asked me to talk, and this is what God gave me for sixth grade here and also for the whole school. Can you pray this prayer for your school? Can you pray this for your fellow students, for your teachers? Can you pray for God's salvation to come for anyone in this school that's not saved, that they will be saved this year? Can you pray that this school year, that everyone in this school will receive God's love? Can you pray this school year that every person that is weak in this school will receive the power and the ministry of God's Holy Spirit? You can pray that. And guess what? God will answer that prayer and God will, God will, 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 you will do some awesome, great, mighty things in this school that you have never seen before. That's the power of this prayer. Let's go to the Lord this morning, and I'm going to ask you to pray. I'm going to help lead you and guide you into praying this prayer this morning. Dear Jesus, I am so happy to be here at this very moment with Calvary Academy, a school that I love so much that you put so deeply into my heart. I care so much for these students and these teachers, but I know I don't care nearly as much for them as you do. You love them in ways they could never imagine. You love them so deeply and so fully, and God, you desperately desire for them to know your grace and your love and your power. I pray, reveal it to them like this gift that they will see that, God, you have this free gift for every single person in this room and for those in their life that they love. With every head bow and every eye closed this morning.
Is there someone you would like to pray to be saved? Listen, this is between you and God. Don't raise your hand. This is between you and God. Can you begin to pray for someone that you know that you think needs to be saved? Do it quietly. Do it between you and God. Call their name before God. Say, God, will you save John? Or will you save Michael? Will you save um, uh, Michelle? Or will you save them, God? Please, Lord, save them. Show them that free gift of salvation. Begin to pray for them right now. Ask God to save them. I'm praying for someone myself. I really, really, really want to be saved. I really want to see them saved. And if you're here this, this morning, maybe you're not sure if you would go to heaven. Maybe you're, you don't know if you're saved. You pray that for you now. You say, Jesus, I want to be saved. I want to live for you, God. Thank you for dying to pay the price for my sins. Save me, Jesus. And God will answer that prayer every single time. Or maybe you're here this morning and you know someone, they need God's love. Their heart is broke. They're angry inside. They say and do things that hurt you and hurt other people. Can you, right now, quietly, I want you to do that. Maybe it's a fellow student. Maybe it's someone that you know. It's a friend or a family member. Real quietly, I want you to begin to pray for them. Say, God, will you give them the gift of love? Will you give them love, Jesus? Go ahead and ask God to do that right now. Jesus, please show them love, God. Show them love, Lord. Give them love, Jesus. Because I know, Lord, if they receive your love, they'll stop doing those things. And then lastly here this morning, I want you to pray for those who are weak. Anybody that's weak, maybe in their body, they're sick, or maybe they're in a hospital, or maybe uh, they, they, uh, they're, 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 they're having a hard time doing things because they're sick. Pray for them. Pray God will give them strength. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's a fellow student. Maybe they're weak inside because maybe they're upset or sad because something has happened to them. Pray God will give them strength and power. Or maybe it's you. Maybe you need love. Maybe you need. Maybe you're weak and you need power from God. Go ahead. Ask God right now at this very moment. Say, God, I need power. I feel weak. Please, God, give me strength. I need, Lord, more than what I've got. Maybe you're having a hard time following God, obeying God. It's all right to be honest with God and say, Lord, I need help, Lord, to be able to do what you want me to do. It's hard to follow your plan. And I really need help this morning. Help me, Jesus, please. God's going to help you. He's going to help you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, wasn't that easy? Wasn't that easy? Wasn't that easy to pray? Every single person prayed it from kindergarten to eighth grade. You can pray this prayer. I pray that this Christmas that God will use your prayer and will change your life and change someone else. God bless you and thank you for allowing me to share this morning. Thank you, Mr. Chapel. Oh, he did a great job. <laughs> um, so we're going to do one last prayer um, to close out our chapel. Write your heads and close your eyes. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day. I pray that everybody has a great day today. Pray that all the tests and quizzes everybody has, they do great on them. And I pray that everybody gets to their destination safe after school. Amen. Amen.